I'm going to start with the uh, pink elephant in the room. Most people know that you're now working with HIV Equal. Jack McEnroth used to work there. Uh, he's no longer there, and I think that he was with the campaign from the beginning. He told me that. Um, what happened? Um, well, I don't know the specifics, but, um, you know, I, I think there was just a disagreement, and uh, I'm not sure if he was with the campaign from the very beginning. I know that it was being conceptualized by World Health Clinicians, um, and he was brought on to uh, definitely be a big part of the HIV Equal campaign, but, um, you know, HIV Equal is uh, no bodies campaign. It's, it's uh, a team, and uh, it's run by World Health Clinicians, which is, a, you know, an HIV specialist uh, nonprofit organization. And, um, you know, nobody can just produce this because there's one specific element that's very specific, or <laughs> there's one element that's very specific to HIV equal, and that is every picture um, that you see, that person had to get an HIV test before they took their picture. And so this was a very comprehensive uh, movement and, and campaign that took a lot of uh, a lot of people to create. So you know sometimes things don't work out. Okay, uh, so it sounds like just like an employee employer kind of kind of just terminating. That's it. No. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, are there any are there any hard feelings? No, I mean I met Jack. Uh, whenever he photographed for the needle prick project. Oh yeah. And, um, everyone has respect for everyone's, um, stake in the, in the fight against HIV and HIV stigma. Um, but sometimes things just don't work out and you know, okay. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> Thanks for answering that on behalf of HIV equal. Uh, typically your, uh, interviews, talk more about your activism, but I want to talk about you a little bit more personally. Um, finish this sentence. Stole it from Barbara Walters. Tyler Curry is... Always changing. <laughs> I guess that's a symbol, because that that, that kind of encaps, or, uh, encapsulates everything. And um, I never want to be stagnant, and I never want to stop growing, so... Whether I go, you know, left or right, front or back, like I just always want to continue to change, uh, hopefully for the better. So I can say that, you know, the reason why I'm talking to you today has been a change, and it's been, you know, probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. So, Tyler, you've written a ton of essays and, and entries in um, the LGBT niche demographic. Uh, some of them have probably been a bit controversial. Are there any that you regret? You... Yes and no. I, there you go again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really hate negative journalism. Um, and I hate these stories that tell you what you where you should be in life or what you can't do anymore because you're this age or... Um, like this one stupid one that was like the five tattoos that that tell you that you're an idiot and all of that stuff is just garbage. Like it is just crap that is like you're spending your time on and it's negativity. And if you post that on your page, like you're just releasing garbage into the in the world and, and people relate that to you. Um, I wrote one uh, – I wrote this series that I – you know – I love, but it, apparently people took it, in, you know, in a negative way, and that was the six gay men you never want to meet, and then the six gay man part two. Um, and these were caricatures. I mean, whenever I wrote them, it was kind of a, a evaluation of culture, and so I easily was every one of those gay men, and in my opinion, everyone has been one. They were um, dramatizations of characteristics that we all have, but. That being said, I don't want to be a part of any negative journalism. And even if that made if that made someone feel bad, I would take it back. Well, that's fair enough. Um, what's your thoughts on Michael Weinstein? He's out of touch. Just com he's out of touch and in the exact wrong position that anyone out of touch should be. 
he is in uh, a position where he's going to affect a lot of people and his opinion really matters. And um, unfortunately, he's doing so much damage. Um, that makes me mad. So yeah, out of touch. <laughs> Who is your HIV hero? Peter Staley. Why? Uh, you know, I... I've watched him, I've read all of his stuff, and I love the tone he takes. Um, I love how he handles um, discourse. And, you know, you can read his passion, but it's always so well-reasoned. And I think that that's definitely something that I strive to always be, whether I I pull it off or not, I don't know, you can tell me, but, uh, you know... I I am not someone that goes for the shock and awe. I mean, maybe like a headline, but the material should always be well reasoned um, and pretty rational. And um, that's what I think his is. It's rational without with also being aggressive and passionate. 